Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. Today we're going to take a look at the fork seals on your motorcycle. Specifically, we're going to give you the basics of how your fork seals work and how you'll know it's time to replace them. And then some general steps that will guide you through the process of replacing them when the time comes. Now, every manufacturer and every model is going to be a little bit different. In fact, we've already done a fork seal replacement on a couple of different units. And you can check out the description below to find the links to those videos. It's important to have a basic understanding of the job so you can get the correct parts ordered and then head out to your toolbox. But before we start working on them, let's get a better understanding of how your fork seals work on your machine. So if you're ready, let's go. So, how does the front fork work on a motorcycle? Well, basically, you've got two parts. First, we have a spring that holds the weight of the motorcycle up. When we hit bumps of the road or trail, it compresses and allows the wheel to handle those undulations. Second, we have a dampening system. That's inside of the tube. It helps to smooth out the movement of the spring and give you a consistent ride. Now it's the dampening system where your fork seals enter into the picture. See, the dampening works by using oil that is pushed in and out of the small holes inside the fork tube. And the resistance of the oil moving through those holes is what dampens or slows down the reaction of the spring. And the fork seals, well, they help to keep all that oil inside of the tube. Well, how are you going to know when it's time to replace those seals? The surest indicator is pretty straightforward. You'll see it. If you see that there's oil on the fork leg or suddenly you find there's a bunch of dirt sticking around there, you might have a seal leak. Now in some cases, you might even end up with fork oil on the inside of the front fender or even worse, they could end up on your brake rotor. And oil and brake rotors don't play well together. From a handling standpoint, you may also feel the front end getting spongy or soft or actually springing a little too much. But as seals go, it doesn't get better and the oil leaks out and it can mess up how your machine rides and if it gets on the brakes, how it stops. So here you are, you see the oil, you feel the sponginess or the bounciness through the handlebars. So it's time to replace those seals unless it's the rare circumstance where the seal is defective or was damaged somehow, go ahead and do both sides because when these things wear, they tend to wear out at a pretty consistent rate. So if you're seeing a leak on one side, they're coming to the other side in short order. Now, when you're ready to do the job, a clean workspace is essential. We're talking about moving parts here with a very, very tight tolerance. So dirt and contaminants can do a number on those parts. Now another thing, you're going to want to arrange your parts in the order that they come off the motorcycle and the fork tubes. There's a lot of parts in there that look similar and it's really easy to get them mixed up if you're not careful. So take your time, stay organized, and keep your parts in order. You will also need to pay attention to the orientation. When you're taking the old seals off, pay attention to how they go on and which side is up. You might even want to mark those with a marker or something to remember how they go in place. Now, you want to make sure your motorcycle is on a secure lift to hold it in place because you're basically going to take the entire front end off, so something has to hold it up. Now you also need to make sure the motorcycle is secure on the stand and anchored down on all four corners because you sure don't want one falling over on you, especially if it's a gold wing. Next, you'll need to get the brake caliper removed. Now generally that's going to be just a couple of bolts holding the caliper holder in place. Now on some bigger machines you may have a caliper on both sides of the wheel, so obviously you need to get both of them off if that's the case. Then you want to loosen up your axle and drop the wheel out. Now the next part of the process will differ from unit to unit, of course. You're going to need to dig down to the top of the triple tree. That's the clamps that are actually holding the fork tubes in place. You're going to need to deal with the plastics or the instruments to get there, but that's the only way to get the fork tubes out. Now, before you remove the tubes, go ahead and loosen the caps at the top of the tubes. 
They're probably on there pretty tight and it's a whole lot easier to break them loose when the clamps are still keeping the tubes in place. Then you can just loosen the pinch bolts and drop the legs out. Now, once you've got the fork legs out, you're going to want to finish removing those fork caps so you can get the old oil out. Then you want to wipe everything down. You might even want to use some brake cleaner to clean the fork tubes before you start pulling things apart. All right, time to get the old seals. It's going to be some combination of rubber dust seals and maybe a couple of metal rings depending on your particular model. With the fluid drained out and the old seals out, now is a good time to inspect the fork tubes. If there's a little pitting, you might get some of that out with some polish, but nothing abrasive. These tubes need to be just as smooth as possible so that they seal properly. Then replace your seals in order and in orientation. They came off. Now, it will be important if your machine's got a little bit of time on it to wrap some electrical tape, especially around the upper part of the fork tubes. Because, believe it or not, as that chrome starts to break up and get a little bit older, when we go to put the new seals on, it'll just slice straight through it. So we want to protect the new seals from any damage or irregular surface that may be on the upper part of your actual fork tubes themselves. Now, once you've got the seals on, you'll need to go ahead and refill the tubes with oil. Now, your service manual will tell you exactly how much oil your forks will take. And I use a depth gauge on a digital caliper. Just set it a tick deeper than the manufacturer's oil level and then fill to that point. At this point, you just need to get your fork caps back on. Just close them up and you can torque them once you get the forks back on the machine. Now, you just need to reverse the process to get the fork legs back into place. Get them in the triple tree and then torque everything down. Replace your instruments, then install your wheel and your calipers. Now, once that's done, you need to make sure your forks are parallel so that the motorcycle will track properly. That process varies from model to model, but in our Goldwing and Jixer fork seal videos, we can show you the basics of that process. Well guys, that just about wraps it up. Just remember, keep everything clean, keep your parts in order, and make sure your motorcycle is super secure on that lift. Now listen, if you have any questions or comments, why don't you just leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. And hey, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can keep up with whatever I'm working on next. We just wanna say thank you for shopping here with us at Partzilla, and we will see you in the next video. Y'all have a great day.